I have been seriously growing houseplants for about four years now and over that time I've tried all the different tips, tricks, tools and hacks out there. Let's go through the ones that are worth it, which ones aren't and which ones you can DIY. A cute product you can buy are plant trellises. You can get plastic ones like this or metal ones. They are really cute and they work really well. This is different to a moss pole or a cocoa choir pole. Those are used to grow the plant. This is just used to help one stick up or it's more of a stake. Definitely think getting something which stakes your plant is worth it, but you don't have to buy something new if you don't want to. And next up, we've got gloves. These are for cleaning plants specifically. So you put them on, spray your plant, and then use it to wipe them down. Both hands, because front and back sleep always. Obviously, these are really great and handy, but you can just use microfiber cloths, regular cloths, an old towel, whatever you want. Definitely need something to clean your plant's leaves, but you don't have to buy something new. So you want rags, socks, anything you've got around the house. Is it worth spending money on proper gardening shears? I say it's definitely worth it. These scissors or even sharp kitchen ones just aren't going to cut it. If you want to propagate or be able to prune your plants properly, you need some proper tools. These are so sharp, really well made, easy to clean. They make a huge difference. I really love the look of all these cute propagation stations that you can buy, especially these mushroom ones. You know, I always use these, but I've also found some really cute ones when I've been thrifting. This is a little vintage vase that I found. So cute. It's even got a little leaf on the front. These ones I've also saved or thrifted or repurposed. So that's definitely a great way to get into it. You can also use old jars or old sauce bottles as well. So you definitely don't need to buy a new product as cute as they are. I hate moisture meters. I'm talking about the ones that you push into the soil. I hate them. I don't think they work. I don't like the look of them. This one is slightly better. You push it in and pull it out and the soil gets caught in these and you can see if it's damp. But honestly, just use your finger. Use your finger, stick it in your plant, see if it feels wet or dry. For this method, a clean finger means that your plant needs water. If your finger comes out with soil on it, put the watering can down. Let's chat fertilizers. It is definitely worth investing in a good plant fertilizer. I like to use the plant runner, but they are only available in Australia and the UK at the moment. So if you don't have the plant runner near you or you want to try some DIY options, I make a banana fertilizer sometimes, which you'll see in my bottom watering videos. For that, you leave the banana skin in water overnight. I also add Epsom salts to my plants, which is a great natural magnesium. You can also add leftover coffee grounds or coffee water to some plants, including the monstera, citrus tree, and other outdoor plants. If you have fish, using the tank water is really great for plants as well. Sticky traps. I have a few of these around, but I find a better way to catch fungus gnats is by making a solution of apple cider vinegar and dish soap and putting this in white bowls. You can see one on my shelf right now. Putting this in white bowls near a plant that may have fungus gnats, they are attracted to the sweetness of the apple cider vinegar and then kind of get caught in the soap. These don't look the best, especially when they are sticking out the top of your plant. If you put them further down, it's a good way if you have a real infestation, but honestly, the apple cider vinegar and soap always works for me. What about products for leaves and pests? Neem oil is great for a leaf shine and also to prevent pests. Whereas I use white oil if I have an infestation of something. It's called white oil in Australia. It may also be known as horticultural oil or mineral oil where you are, depending. This is so great. Whenever I've used this, it has been a really effective solution for pests. So I would definitely invest in this. Neem oil I really love as well, but I know some people don't like the smell. I have seen people say that you can just add some soap and water and use that to spray your plants, but when I did that on my palm, it burnt the leaves. So I do not recommend using water and soap to spray on your plants. You can also just go in with water, your glove or your cloth and wipe them down. Much like the plant propagation stations, you can definitely buy lots of cute little hanging pots for plants. But again, some of my favorite ones are things that I've thrifted. So this is a jar with a string on it and I think it looks so cute. It's half water propagation half hanging plants. Do you actually need drainage holes in your pots? No and yes. I have a mix of decorative pots that do and don't have drainage holes and it doesn't matter because all my plants are in their growers pots still. This way they've all got adequate airflow and also drainage and a lot of my plants I've actually plugged the drainage holes so there's no leaking. You can get whatever cute planter you want. So drainage holes are a must but they don't have to be in the decorative planter.